Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to stop your puppy from biting. So over the years I've got all I've had all sorts of puppies, big ones, small ones, all of them. Um, and these very simple things that I do are what I've done to just stop them from biting. So at the moment what they're doing is they're nipping, aren't they? When they're they're playing with you and they're nipping. Um they haven't learned how to behave properly, and so they're nipping and they've got their little needly teeth, and it's really hurting, but no, but no damage is being done. But it really will be amazingly quick before those dogs are big enough for those to actually, you're going to get bruises um, and then you could end up actually having bites. So you need to get that behaviour stopped. It's vital. So there are lots of puppy behaviours that you need to get stopped. But um, getting them to stop biting is one of the really important ones because an adult dog, that whether it's biting in playing, biting in excitement or actually biting in aggression it is absolutely not acceptable and you absolutely cannot have it and so just do these very simple things and you won't get that in a minute I'm gonna I was gonna tell you what to do with your puppies and then in a minute I'm gonna talk to you about my other dog Hunt who is an adult dog that's actually he's just recently come to us and he has aggression and so I'm gonna talk to you about that afterwards if you've got an adult dog that's biting and it's still worth listening to because I found that he had just never been taught these very simple tricks and I'm teaching them, them to him now as if he was a puppy. So the first thing is, it's a very simple rule. Your puppy's teeth must never touch human skin. If you always remember that. Very, very simple rule. So their mouth, their teeth never touch human skin under any circumstances. If you remember that, that it's really quite simple. A lot of people play with puppies with their hand. So they'll put the hand over the um, puppy's mouth. They'll have the puppy chewing their hand and all of that. Absolutely no way. That How is the puppy going to know that when he suddenly gets to eight months old and he could actually bite and cause damage, that it's not acceptable anymore? Also, when you've got a tiny little puppy, it's so much easier to teach them things than to teach an adolescent dog. So at the moment, your puppy is this gorgeous little thing. He's listening to everything. He's probably doing sits and he's coming and he's walking lovely on the lead. And you might have him off the lead because his comebacks are great. You wait until he hits adolescence at about eight months old. He's not going to listen to a word you say. He's not going to care about who you are. He's not going to listen to any of the training you've done in the past. And there was no way at that stage you are going to be able to teach him easily to stop biting that it's just really it's doable but it's really hard so if you're at a lucky position where you're watching this video and you've just got a tiny little puppy then you're really lucky because you can get in there now and get that problem sorted out so just remember there's a couple of things if there's two things to remember if the puppy ever touches his your skin with his mouth there are two things to do one is to yelp and I'm going to do it now. I'm not sure how my dogs are going to react, but I'm going to do it. So if he nips your skin or puts his your hand in his mouth, then you yelp like this. Oh! And did you see there the reaction we got from Harry? So Harry's six, but you see that reaction you got. It was it was immediate, immediate. If all my dogs are looking at me, it was immediate. And so you do that high pitched, quick yelping, and that replicates what puppies do when they're young in the litter and they're playing together. If a puppy gets too rough with another puppy, he'll do that yelp. And it just teaches the puppy that that was too hard and it's not acceptable. But obviously, that puppy in the litter did not have to, was not able to learn about how to be with human beings and their skin. And so you've got to re-educate him. So you do that high-pitched yelp that I just did. The other thing that's really effective, and I always do, if a puppy puts his mouth on your skin... You, you stop what you're doing. So if you're stroking him or you were playing with him, you stop it. You just stop. Cross your arms and you stop. If you can, turn your back, but you stop immediately what you're doing. So what I would do is if I'm stroking a puppy or I'm playing with a puppy and he starts mouthing me, I make it very dramatic. I yelp and then I get up and I walk away and it ends it. And the puppy very quickly learns that that is absolutely not going to get him what he wants because what he wants is for you to stroke him, for you to play with him. And that ended. And instinctively, he will just know, oh, well, that didn't, I, I mustn't do that. Um, so it's really important. But it's actually really simple. So let me just quickly go over that again. Their 
mouths, teeth, all that area must never touch human skin. If it does, you immediately make the yelping noise and then you get up. Yelping noise and get up, cross your arms and turn your back. You don't necessarily have to walk away. You could just turn your back. If you're sitting down and you're in a position where you can't just get up for whatever reason, you could just yelp and then cross your arms. So you put the hands away and you turn, you don't look at him. If he keeps jumping over you, onto you, just keep your hands crossed and ignore him. No eye contact and you ignore him. But it's much more effective if you can actually, if, if, if you can actually remove yourself from him. Stand up and remove yourself so he can't jump on, onto you. Um, I've never known this technique not to work with a puppy. If you've got an adolescent dog or, you know, an older puppy, I'm not talking about an adult dog. I'm going to talk about that separate in a minute. If you've got an older puppy, like a, like an eight-month-old, nine-month-old, and he's he, he, and he's biting and it's hurting, it is exactly the same technique. Nothing changes. Exactly the same technique. It's going to be harder and he's not going to listen as well. And the disadvantage that you've got, by that point, most of them, if he's a bigger breed, he's, he's going to be quite big. So what he's going to do is to get your attention, he's going to jump up at you and he's going to keep coming around to the front of you. So if you turn your back to him, he'll keep coming around to the front of you and he'll jump up at you. And, you know, he could be quite big by this age, but you've got to just walk away. No communication. And if you have to walk out of the room and close the door, you absolutely he has to get that message loud and clear that him nipping you, biting you, whatever it is, absolutely has to stop. And I can't tell you, it is vital that you put this training in. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with an adult dog that thinks it's okay to bite people. Right, so this is Humps. Now, he is five years old. He's only just come to us. He's been with us for a few months. And he... Now, this is a completely different case because he is actually aggressive. So he's come from the Korean meat trade. So he was used as a breeding dog in the, hoard, in the hoarding situation in Korea for um, meat trade. So he's lived in absolute hell. Absolute hell for all his life which is five years and so he's come to us now and he's aggressive and he he has bitten a, a good few people um and it's a big problem now i'm a really experienced dog owner and i've been able to he's able to live with us safely because i'm able to do what has to be done to to stop this behavior he has never bitten me and so he trusts me and so i'm, I'm able to um, handle him and so he's able to live with us do not take an aggressive dog flippantly. If you've got an aggressive dog that is biting people, it is not just a flippant thing. It's a very, very, very serious thing. And dogs that bite people will be put down. That's the law. You have to be an extremely experienced dog owner to deal with an aggressive dog. You have to know what you're doing or else it could go very wrong. If the dog has ever bitten you, you need to get some help because he hasn't got any respect for you. That is a whole different subject, but I just don't want people to watch this video and just think that I'm saying that you can have a dog in your house that's aggressive and bites people and then it's OK. It's not OK. The only reason Humps is with us is because I know what I'm doing. We're making progress with him. We're seeing that every day. Um, and I really believe we will get this out of him. So the, what I just told you about a puppy and how to stop a puppy from biting when he came to us, I watched a succession of videos um, of him before he came to us. So some of them were in Korea, some of the videos were in this country. And very well-meaning people were playing with him, but they were using their hands. They were actually spinning their hand around his nose, and the game was that he had to catch the hand. A dog that aggressively bites people, that is just so unbelievably dangerous to play that game. So unbelievably dangerous. Obviously, the people that were doing that were inexperienced dog owners and didn't know what they were doing. So from their perspective, they were just playing with him. So there wasn't, you know, there was no malice in it or anything like that, but incredibly irresponsible. No dog should ever have a game of where the game is to chase your hand. And that absolutely goes for Humps here. That completely goes for him. And so when he first came to us, he was very mouthy. And if you went to stroke him, um, he wasn't being aggressive at all, but he would mouth you and it was hard and it hurt and it was way too way too aggressive so in um dogs there's a thing called bite inhibition and it's where dogs learn how hard they can press down and when you see dogs play with each other you see there's all the play mouthing going on 
they're not actually biting each other otherwise the other dog wouldn't play so it's just a very soft bite and they know that that doesn't hurt and that's okay but that is just between dogs that never applies to adults to human beings it never ever applies to human beings but he hadn't learnt bite inhibition and so he was just biting and it was hurting um, and it would be not, not acceptable to, for him to be trying to mouth me no matter how well his bite inhibition was and so um, I knew okay well this is actually quite simple I've just got to take him back to the beginning and teach him and so everything I've just told you about how to train a puppy I did with him and it's working a treat and he sometimes if you um, are stroking him and sometimes he does get a little bit excited and um, he will go to mouth. But it is just mouthing, but absolutely, completely unacceptable. So I will immediately stop doing what I'm doing. Now, something you do need to bear in mind, and I have to bear this in mind with humps here. If you've got a dog with a strong prey drive, so a strong prey drive is where they are a breed that would chase animals or um, like... Uh, terriers where they would they were bred to chase rats and badgers and stuff like that anything along those lines and if you're not sure then just assume that your, your dog's got a prey drive um some dogs that aren't even bred to do stuff like that will still have a prey drive so like they'll chase cats like my little albert that we just saw my older dog he's a bichon so he's not bred in any way to have prey drive but he really really has a prey drive when it comes to cats so anything like that if you did the yelping with an adult dog with a strong prey drive, there is a chance that you're going to make the dog very excited. And because with Humps, I don't know his past. I'm from watching him out on walks and stuff and in the garden. I'm pretty sure that he's had to find his own food at times. And so he, I think he does have a strong. Pro it's not so much a prey drive, but more of a survival drive. Um, and so I don't do the yelping with him. I just stop what I'm doing. And I just sort of instinctively knew from the moment I had him not to do the yelping. I just had this feeling it wouldn't be a good idea. So if you've got an adult dog, I wouldn't necessarily do the yelping. I would just do the crossing your arms, you know, well, everything I said to do with the puppy. But don't do the yelping because there is a risk they've got a power prey drive. And there is a risk that you're going to get them more excited. And that, that wouldn't be a good idea. Um, so let me just make the point that me doing the yelp or not the yelping but me doing the other puppy training with hums is in no way addressing his aggression i'm not sort of doing that and saying well now he's not mouthing us so that's dealt with his aggression that isn't it it stopped him from mouthing us when he's being playful it that what doing that would in no way help his aggression it's a completely different thing completely different and it will in no way help However, if in his brain he thinks it's completely acceptable, if not exciting and good, to bite a human's hands while playing, when he's aggressive, there is more chance that his brain is just going to go to biting. If you have taught him to have some self-control and not mouth at all when playing or being stroked, you've got a little bit more chance that he might show a bit more self-control if he feels threatened and he wants to be aggressive. So it may help a little bit, but it absolutely is not the solution. You have to deal with the aggression as a whole different subject altogether. So that's that. It is actually really quite simple. Out of all the things you've got to teach your puppy, it's one of the most simple, but absolutely one of the most important. So um, as always, if you've got any questions, then um, put, just pop them into comments. And I'm on Instagram, I'm on uh, twitter it's all under fairy and spoil you know how it all works all the system how it all works so um do what you got to do so um thank you very much for watching um i hope that you have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye